Yeah. Oh, so wait, so that's you. Yeah. That's that's fire. fire. But the new one, fire. the one that's the Italian teacher that would hit my hands if I did oh, something wow. wrong. I had the same thing. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, went, I was in Atlanta. I went to church with him. Yeah. Okay, that yeah, was, tell me, please. That was like, I started, I was, I was texting my friends. I was like, I'm about to cry right now. Like, that was, <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, that was the craziest experience. Yeah, I just started making beats because, you know, when I was like, 15, I was trying to record my own music and I learned you had to buy the music. Okay. You know, buy yeah. the beat. Yeah, and I didn't yeah. have no money to do it. So okay. I'm like, fuck it, I'm gonna learn how to make beats myself. Like, okay. just making shit for myself. So we're there, Riot's there, and Say's there. Where am I? Right there. Right here? Excuse me, my fault. Is that Audrey 3000? I'm like a table for real. It's the dude with the fucking table. What? This shit, what? There's some props, man. There's some props. That's a whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Boy, man. You're right there. Oh, man, man. I got the ghost next to me, oh, man. That shit man. crazy, man. Man. Oh, hey, man. Look at that. I'm gonna change. Wait. I'm gonna change. Oh, wow. 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 Okay. So, A, thank you for being here at our first ever conversations. My name is Julius. I'm on Lucid Monday. Our goal is to spotlight the most innovative music producers around the world, and being here with y'all is absolutely insane. I'm here with Ness, my brother, the founder of Working on Dying. If you ever heard of it, ah, I'm working on dying. <laughs> was that was that our tag? Yeah. Is, is that is that the new tag? Can yeah, I use that one? That, how do I do it? How do I do it better? <laughs> but we with Benny, how Benny X who is Nin Complex's best producer of 2023. Let's give it up for yes, Benny. We got, we got Riot, the number one hip hop producer on Billboard of 2023. That was. In the world, come on, talk that talk. In the world right now. And Zay Tovin, really one of the pioneers of modern music today. Sure. Let's give it up for Zay Tovin. Yeah, this is, how are you guys feeling? How, how are you doing in general? Man, feeling blessed, feeling blessed. Feeling good. Shit, crazy, man. Next to these guys, man, I just feel happy, man. Yeah, I, I guess um, I'll start by saying, like, uh, what is the point of conversations, right? So Julius has Lucid Monday Magazine, which is, for me, the, the spotlight for producers everywhere in the world right now. Like, He's highlighted a lot of my guys from Filthy to Benny X, highlighted Riot, Boy Wonder, Wonder Girl, my, my girl back there. Like, he, he's built this home and he really honed down on production and producers. And like, we talk every day and we wanted to create something where we can A, show that there's multiple ways to be successful as a producer. And also, like, we wanted to be a bridge, like, um, the point really of having Zaytoven, Ryan, and Benny is like, when I look at this, I see 15 years of music here. I see someone who like showed us the way, right? I see someone who's capitalizing on it right now the most. And I see someone who sees the way and is trying to go a whole different way to lead other people there. So I think that uh, the point of this conversation today for a lot of people in this room is just to have a real talk with people and for you to understand like some of the pitfalls of this, some of our successes, and really just to um, get a better look at who they are. This is my first time ever even meeting Ryan, yeah. but like I'm a fan. I always support everything you do online. Zay, when he told me he was flying out to Atlanta, I was kind of mad because I wanted to come and really meet you in person then, but just as a student and as a fan of music, I can tell you, like, to my collective, when we start first using Fruity Loops, it was the Zaytoven VSTs, <laughs> it was the Lex Luger VSTs. Like, when you can have a, a sound that we wanted to emulate and we wanted to to take to the next level, like, you, you are absolutely, like, you should be appreciated more. So, like, we appreciate you, so appreciate we're doing that, but. That's really uh, the point of the conversations. I know a lot of people just showed up to kind of support us, but I want them to really understand what we want to do, which is just the intimate, like, real conversation. So that's really what we're doing here today. We're going to keep it light and easy. 
Uh, my boy Julius, he's way more like uh, analytical and scheduled than me. So Jules, Jules got real questions and things of that sort. <laughs> um, I have some other questions, but you know, we just gonna keep it flowing. And uh, I think you have some from online or earlier as well too, right? Yeah, I mean, like, I just, I'm trying not to be analytical about it because I'm, I'm very passionate about this in general, um, about you guys and everything that you guys do. Because I think that just, I love seeing the evolution of music and all of you guys are innovating it to, to be what music is today. And I feel like that's so special being able to be here in your guys' presence. So I mean, like, in general, like, I feel like something that's synonymous with all of you guys is that you guys all, like artists, gravitate towards you guys specifically because you guys have a very unique take on music. So I didn't know if there was any, you know, of your favorite experiences building up an artist and, and what those would be specifically. Benny, what about you? What, what do you like, brother? Let's start with Ben Jammin. Wait, what was the question again? Like, what do you, what's your favorite part about building up an artist? Um, I think being able to have a vision and seeing it come to life um, and, and molding you know, an artist to, to do something that they're usually not comfortable with. Yeah. You know, I think that's it, yeah. Who, who, who has that artist been for you so far in your career? Damn, I feel like it was a lot. Um, it doesn't it does have to be like, obvious answer. Yeah, I feel like Yee, you know what I'm saying? Like, definitely Yee, like, definitely bringing him out of his, his like, comfort zone and, and, like, just having him try, to, you know, new different genres and, and like, stuff like that. I feel like we've had some success doing that. and. Um, who else? Uh, me, me being your manager, I, I would say uh, Fouché. Oh, yeah, 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 no, no, no. I'm not gonna lie, I feel like she pushed me though. Great, let's yeah, talk about I it. Feel like, I feel like, you know, like we have a, uh, like a record called I'm Fine, and she had hit me, she was like, yo, like, uh, I want like a folk, but this death, this death metal, like breakdown in the middle of it, and I was like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> explain that more and we, we like met up and she explained it more. I, I, I took the idea home and I made it. I did some folk guitar and then I did this metal breakdown this just and she's screaming in it and uh, and it ended up working out and sounded crazy like because I had no idea where the record was gonna go but it ended up coming out I don't know crazy. So now, you know. now right I'm, I'm kind of new to you but before Ice, were you really heavy in like developing artists as well or no? Nah, honestly, I just started making beats cause you know, when I was like 15, I was trying to record my own music and I learned you had to buy the music, Okay. you know, buy yeah. the beat. Yeah, I didn't yeah. have no money to do it. So okay. I'm like, fuck it, I'm gonna learn how to make beats myself. Like, okay. just making shit for myself. You know, I didn't meet Ice till I got to college. So, you know, when I met her, like I just seen something, heard something different. And I'm just like, you know, I believe in, I believe in this. So that's when I started, you know, developing that. But, you know, I wasn't really out here looking to do that. Yeah. If anything, I was looking, you know, how can I make beats for myself and figure out what to do with, like that. But if, if you could, can you like, uh, I'm, I'm curious about like your process word, right? Like, can you describe maybe like, is it easy recording? Are you really like super hands on kind of let her do her thing? I think like, I'm, I'm personally curious about I feel like in the beginning, you know, I was teaching how to record, yeah. song structure, hook, verse, you know what I'm saying? How to approach certain records and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, fast forward now, like two years later, she, you know, she found her own identity as an artist. Yeah. You know, and I feel like when you get to that point, you kind of let them do their thing. You know, if you have, you know, a feeling in your heart, you're going to express that. But, you know, you got to also trust your artist just as much as they trust you as a producer. So I feel like it got to be, uh, almost like even, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Or you, you, you listen out to them, what they like, and they listen to you, you know what I'm saying? So you kind of got to feel that, but in the beginning I was more hands-on, but now, you know, she blossomed into her own flower, her own artist, her own. Do know. she let you produce, and like as, as producers, you know you know what I mean when I say that. Does she, does she yeah, allow you nah, to produce? Nah, I mean, her? there's some times where I, like, I'm like, yo, you gotta do this beat. Like, yeah. you gotta do this one. You yeah. know, and she might, you know, be with it or not with it, but she always tries. And, you know, that's what I appreciate. She always trusts my vision. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I feel like that's why we, we were able to do what we do because, you know, she trusts what I say and, you know, I trust what she, what she say too, so. Zay, I, I, I could probably sit with you forever, but like, mm -hmm. 
I maybe want to understand your process because like, I think a lot of people haven't had as much longevity and like relevance. And I, and I know that comes from being open to change and being open to like um, being fluid. So like, I think a lot of what gives us success in our era is developing artists. Um, did, you, did you have that same path of like developing a lot of artists until you got to that successful person? Or like, what, what was more of like your, your path, please? Well, you know, what got me in the music period is me being a church musician. Okay. You know, I played, I still play the organ at church. A lot of, a lot of yeah, our friends you know come from, yeah, yeah, yes, yes. So it's like, that, that's where my passion for music came from. Okay. And just like he was saying, I, I wanted to rap myself. I started, you know, making beats because I wanted to rap. Yeah. Me and my little brother want to rap. My cousin, you know, we just, yeah. but we doing it for the fun of it. Yeah. See, I was, I don't know how old y'all are, but you know, I used to put my beats on a cassette tape. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a, yeah, I'm a, I'm a and I used to plug it up to like the radio, <laughs> like the radio to put the mic in it and yeah. rap over the yeah. you know, cassette tape. Dub taping. Yeah, dub taping. Mm -hmm. And you know, you take that to school with your radio and it's like, okay, yeah, you're making some noise. Yeah. 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 So, but it was guys that at my school, you know, that rap that I thought, okay, now he can rap for real. Yeah. Come over to my house, in my room, I'm gonna make some beats, dub tape you, and we're gonna play this at the school. And that's all we was doing it for. Mm -hmm. So, but I, I looked at that as developing artists because now I'm making beats to tailor make how they wanna rap. Mm -hmm. So, my claim to fame is Gucci Man. Okay. You know what I mean? So, yes. when I moved to Atlanta, I started working with Gucci. And Gucci's one just thorough street guy that's just, you know, yeah. he's known for being a street guy more than being a rapper. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it's something about somebody being authentic is what, uh, to me, that just draws me to that artist. Mm -hmm. So me and him is just, be, you know, he loved that I, I made beats and I had my own sound in the studio. And I love the fact that he would just streak and he rapping about, you know, who the person is. Yeah. And I think it just went hand in hand. And before you know it, you know, we making songs just to put on CD and go go to the club and perform, not knowing like, cause this we gonna be the you know, yeah, a big force in music. I think for myself, you influenced a generation of people to play piano, man. Mm -hmm. Like in rap, you brought like I seen like real people I knew that never took an interest in the music, yeah. and they was like, yo, I need to learn melody. I need to. I think I think that's dope. Maybe like uh, even a connecting question of like, um, so you your background is you're technically proficient in piano from church, right? Yeah, organ church, and I'm not I'm not that great. People nah, people no, nah, I was nah, I, nah, 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 I went to church. <laughs> <laughs> I went I was in Atlanta. I went to church with him. Yeah. Okay, that yeah, was, tell me please. That was like I started. I was, I was texting my friends. I was like I'm about to cry right now. Like that was. <laughs> craziest experience because I, I mean like I don't I couldn't even put it in words but like just like how everything is and how fluid it was you just walked in and just started playing and everybody just started knowing exactly what to do and I feel like whatever you say you might be like decently good but you're crazy and that was an amazing experience so, like and I feel like I feel like I have a certain gift I have a, a certain set of tools when I say I'm okay that means there's so many musicians that I know that play me under the table as yeah. far as music. Yeah. But that doesn't mean I don't have a unique gift. You yes. know what I mean? So, uh, and that was my thing. At first, when I first started making beats, I was playing too much piano. So they like, bro, what you want me to do to this beat? I can't. <laughs> it was, it sound like ice cream music. So, you know so, like, so like, so like, let's, let, let's address that. So as producers, sometimes we can overproduce, right? You well, I didn't know what thing? else to do. Okay. I'm first making beats. I'm like all I know is to play. I'm in church, so yeah. I, it sounds like, like some church, church chords, music. Yeah. <laughs> For a street rapper, he's like, bro, I, I, what am I supposed to rap on that right there? Mm -hmm. So, you know. Yeah. But I start, But it, that's why having an artist for a producer like me, the reason why I feel like I've stayed around for so long is because when I get with an artist, it helps develop a sound. Yes. You know what I mean? I'm. I think my sound is known more than I am. People just know like that's that sound, that's that trap sound. But that's when you infamous, you legendary forever. Yeah. yeah. I mean that's just, it's a blessing, you know, to have that. Yeah. yeah. So. so, kind of, and, it, and I, I think this is a great comparison to like what you're saying is kind of describing your background. So, right, you're you're successful, but you you're saying you don't have a heavy background in music, right? Like you kind of picked it up late. I mean, like my pops, you know, was a DJ and shit. Please, yes. So yeah, like, yeah. you know, growing up, I heard 
a whole bunch of music in the yeah. crib. <clears throat> you was dancing? Yeah, you was like, in New York? yeah, like, you know, <laughs> I, you know, I, 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 I've been around a lot of music like that, but in terms of like musicians that, yes. you know, play music and, yes. and participated in, you know, instruments and mm -hmm. shit like that, nah, like, I picked that up just on my ear, like, and even to this day, like, you know, I don't, uh, you know, if, if I have a MIDI in front of me, I can mess with it. You know, yeah. I, I trust my ear. That's what I got, an ear. That's no, what I'm, I'm going to call it. Like, I don't know excellent. how to play instruments fluently, but I got an ear. You know what I'm saying? That's excellent. So yeah. that's that's really my instrument right there. But um, I forgot what the original question no, was. No, no, no. I, really, I, I think you answered it. And I guess maybe my next question is, so you, you everyone here is successful, right? Are you interested now in learning music oh, maybe absolutely. now or, or like now now is it a thing that you want to improve because a lot a lot of people get to success and be like i'm cool no nah, like i figured it out like don't get it twisted like when you know your music and you know how to play your ideas like are transferred faster like you yeah. can be like yo you hear this yo was like he would know how to play it like you know what i'm saying like mm -hmm. that's that's ideal you know what i'm saying like mm -hmm. if you if you're worried about coming up fast yeah. like trying to make melodies fast or whatever you're trying to do so I think it definitely helps. You know, I don't think there's a right way or a wrong way. It's just w what works for you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Then I know, like, uh, well, I know you a little well, but for the people in the room, like, what, what's your musical background? Like, what, how do, how do we get to Vinny X? Um, I was classically trained in piano from like uh, nine to sixteen. What does that mean? Is it like uh, just? I just had this mean. Italian teacher that would hit my hands if I did oh, something wow. wrong. I hate to say it. Hit your finger with the pillow. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> I quit. I like, man. No, my dad was like, you are not quitting this. I'm, I'm paying way too much money for this. So, um, so I like nine, to you going. said 9 to 16? Yeah, 9 to 16. Okay. Um, in, in between that time, I was playing in like church as well. So, so, so that kind of taught me how to play by air and not be so classically yeah you know and in between that time i also taught myself the bass the guitar the and and, and the drums and in high school did the drum line um the jazz band and marching band all, all that and then also during that, that time as well from you know growing up my dad he was a gospel singer okay he had a studio in the crib so okay. um with no hip-hop no, yeah, no hip hop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, like what I was listening to back in the day was just like, was like bands like Creed, Disturb, uh, Google Dolls. I feel like I listen to Deftones because of you. Def yeah, Deftones, Pat Benatar, fucking Peter Cetera, like whatever was on the radio because we didn't have no, no, you no know, like Wi Fi or like internet or, or like computer. It was like whatever was on the radio, church or whatever I was learning in piano school. Um, but yeah, my dad had a studio in, 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 in the crib and then by the time I could really, you know, play the piano, I would help him produce his records, you know? So I was just like, when he was off work on the, on the weekends, it was just me, be me and him on Saturdays and Sundays, just, uh, just making gospel music and then- uh, oh, some publishing shit we gotta go get, huh? I don't know. <laughs> I'm learning some stuff today, you know, I don't know about these records. <laughs> no, no, no. Let's um, go get them, man. Um, uh, but where was I at? You, you and your dad were making gospel music on the weekends? Yeah, 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 gospel music on the weekends. Me and my, like, little brothers, James and David. Um, and, uh, but it, it was strictly gospel music. By the time I was in high school, um, he would lock up the studio on the, the weekends because he didn't trust us in this, the, the studio at all. So I was eager to just start doing my own thing. So there was a point in time where I found a spare key to the studio and my dad would come home exactly at like 8.30 p.m. at night. So after school, I got off school at 3 p.m. This was like ninth grade. Uh, I, I got off school, through, oh, I'm sorry, 2.45 p.m. I would be home by 3. And then I would go to the studio. It was hauling to get home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You was, you had a it wasn't that far. It wasn't that far though. Um, Fifteen. I would, I would like go home. I would unlock the, the studio, take a mental note of like what the studio looked like. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Be like, okay, this was here, this was here, boom, boom. Um, and then I would just do like I don't know synth pop or like metal music or you know just 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 do whatever like I was feeling that day. 
And um, I, I did that for a year to the point um, e, 11th or 12th grade, I asked my family to, to give me my own MacBook. And um, I seen this MacBook on like, on like Craigslist. Um, it was like a broken MacBook, but the, um, the screen didn't work, but the computer part worked. Right. And I had this TV in my room that I could, could figure out that I could. HDMI? Yeah, 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 yeah basically. I, we, hey, we all came from, yeah. So I begged my parents, we like grabbed it. I, I, um, I downloaded Logic um, and then I, I started doing my own thing. But I didn't really get into hip hop till um, like 2013, my, uh, my, my older brother, um, he was a rapper and he, he, he like came to the crib one day and saw that I was making all, all these beats, this type of music. And he would basically uh, coach me on how to make like a hip hop beat. He would be like, Ben, just do this melody. And then I would, I would play it and he would be like, Ben, do this beat. I like play it and then we would just build beats that way and then I just got more and more into hip hop after I graduated high school. Uh, I like went to college. I started listening to, to more hip hop because now I could kind of do my own thing now. Yeah. And uh, I was just catching up on years of hip hop that I missed and. Um, you definitely still do. Oh I, yeah, yeah. I, I play uh, songs all the time and you're like, what's this? Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm learning. Um, but yeah, like that's my musical background, yeah, so. No, that's, that's yeah. excellent. And, and I feel like all of you guys grew, grew up with some sort of musical background, somebody was. Well, there's, there's definitely you. a lot of similarities, definitely between, uh, like, the church playing back, because like, a lot of Benny's music he's known for. Key. It's, it's it's crazy how like when you can really see it in this picture of like, these signature sounds that you guys are known for, but the path to get there, right? Then it's like, your dad was a DJ, so you know, you talking about feeling in your ear. Mm -hmm. You coming from, first off, it's tough to make music in New York because every borough sounds different. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like it's really, I feel like it's definitely more particular to have like a sound, yeah, especially yeah. when there's so much music right now and everybody has a sound. And like we were talking about this, yeah. like who has a very specific sound. And the way that you have like even a take on drill, I feel like it's just like some completely different realm. Like I, I'm, I'm, I've always been curious, like how you even got to that point. Like even listening to like, like if you're talking like Delhi, I don't know drill music, but like, like even the um, that's my favorite beat. Like by Munch, way. for example. Oh, good, good. <laughs> like it just is like a it's like a, it's like a breath of fresh air. So like, th how did you get to that point of even making music like that? I think you just get to a point where you realize you need to you know bring something new to the table. Like you know, I'm not saying I invented drill. You know, I didn't. But there's certain little things that you tweak. You know what I'm saying? Like Munch is like that beat's like one six six. Like that's mad fast for a drill beat. Like you know, you try to rap on a beat like that, you know what I'm saying, it's kind of hard, like, or, uh, you know, Delhi, like, just having uh, the boom, 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 boom. <laughs> like, you know, taking out that last, that last, uh, you know, note right there. Like, little things that just give it that swag, like, you know what I'm saying? I feel like it's all about that swag, like, you know, everybody here, like Zay and Benny, oh, they all got their they little swag on it that you could tell is them, you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like, you know, Hip hop, you know, it's always been here. It's always changing, but I feel like it's about how you take what you love and take it and kind of put your own little twist on it, you know. So that's that's what I'm always trying to do, like reinvent what I already like listening to, you know. And then I feel like eventually, over time, it becomes, you know, more of its own thing that future people look back and be like, oh, you know, this is where this came from. Or, but you know, are you are you interested in taking your sound to other genres? I mean, yeah, like I, I released uh, Pretty Girl with uh, Ice and Rema. So okay. that was a cool little, you know, Afro beat. Uh, added a little bit like a Jersey fusion in there. So, you know, yeah. I, I, I dabble and dibble and dabble it in that a little bit. But um, I have the most fun though when I just make rap records though. Yeah. Like, you know, like with Deli. Like, yeah. like just like the Delis, just like that gritty, mm -hmm. like. You know, I told myself this year, I'm just focused on culture. Like, what's gonna get the people moving? What's gonna, like, I get the happiest when I see people physically moving or being happy to the music. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I think um, what, what I noticed that I like about your style is uh, it's female rap, and that's tough, right? It's like, we do a lot of masculine 
sounds and tones and sonics and it's tough to do almost um, sounds that are aesthetically pleasing like that. Like you, you have tones that are more feminine and masculine and they sit in the same thing. And it's like, yo, you be having gangsters. You be having like straight <laughs> yeah, gangsters, like, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I was like, I that's, said, that's, that's powerful, the goal. Man. Like, you know, that's I, powerful, man. you know, like, you know, Ice is a woman herself, but you know, I feel like if you ask her too, you know, she'd want her music to be for everybody, you yeah. know, not for just one type of person. One, you know what I mean? I think it's for everybody to enjoy. That's my goal. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I want you to hear it on the radio, you hear it in the club. You hear it, you know, in your headphones. So, my whole goal is for it to be, you know, everywhere. But Z still to the, still to the street though. You know what I'm saying? Because that's that's the type of shit that I like. You know. Zay, like in in your long career, have you ever thought about dabbling in other genres of like, or really just like, musically expanding out, or or have you? And am I, am I just not familiar of it? Uh, I've tried. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, please. Like, like, you know. Because we did it by, act, like, recently, like, also just, like, funny, relatable story. <laughs> Benny did this song for Nicki Minaj called Blessings, and we loved it, right? But then one day we looked on Billboard and we were number one gospel. We were like, how? <laughs> right? Yeah. And it was like, full circle. It, it, it was morally, like, a good thing. But yeah. me and Ben was like, I wonder if the other people of gospel are really not going to like this. Right? <laughs> so it was like, it felt good. I was like one time for God, one time, yeah, but it was just yeah. like, uh, it, it was it Amen, was just right? interesting, right? Because it was like, kind of in one week we charted in rap, R and B, and country. Mm -hmm. And when I look at things like that, it makes me smile because I'm like, yo, like when producers really, like in one week when we really start going like multi genre. So I, I was always just interested because like, Philly's such a secular. I won't even say secular sound, but like. Bro, like, Atlanta, like, you guys' sound is so, like, pronounced and strong. Like, did that ever make you feel like you couldn't go do? Because, like, you come from church, so I know you, you like dance music and house music. And, like, did, did you ever feel like because of the area you were in, it never made you not really want to dive into that? Uh, I, I think when I did try to dive into that, you know, I, I feel like as a as a producer, once you have a, a distinctive sound, it don't matter who come to you, they want that they sound. They want that, yeah, yeah yes, so yes, So it's like, yes. you know, I'm like, no, I got, let me play this for you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they, you know how you in a the room, they yes. listen like, yeah, okay, that's cool. That's Can cool. you give me what you yes. gave me? Yes, right, 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 so, right. Yeah, yes. Yes. Every time. Like, you, you know? Right. So in a way, it keeps you in a box, but I think at the same time, it's what's kept me around for so long and kept me as, a, a producer that okay, you know who music that is. You know how to deliver, yeah. Cause, yeah. Cause like you, if you think about a rap artist, when I see rap artists probably fall or fall off, is when they start trying to do too much. They mm -hmm. start trying to do something that's like that's not them. They start losing their fan base, and it's like oh he ain't hard no more. Is there is there like is there music right now that's exciting you that make you feel like man I want to produce again? I always want to produce. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm I'm a competitive guy, so like when I hear you know stuff that they produce or new songs or new artists, new producers, it made me be like, okay, I gotta, I'm ready to go get in the studio. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm ready to get back in my bag. So. Do Do you think it's naturally hard sometimes, the different generations of producers to just naturally come together? Like, I know we like put it together here, mm -hmm. right? But like, why does it? This I mean, because we all be busy. Like, why, why, why does this naturally not happen more? Do you, you think, of like just different generations of producers being like, let's collab more. I think it's a respect thing. I feel like we respect what they do, and they respect what we do. Mm -hmm. We don't have to just merge everything. It's just like we love what you do. Right. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's pretty much what it is. Would you, like. would you be open to the merging? I, I still do that. Yeah. I, I, I collab too. I still do that. Yeah. I'm one of those guys if. If you want to work with me, I want to work with you. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, but if you don't, but it's cool. Like, yeah, it's cool. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's I feel cool. like you're also hungry to find like the next person. You're always, always. posting and trying to find. And also, your son is putting you onto a ton of, of people. So I feel like, like you're saying, like you were with Tana the other day. Like that was like. That's how you I stay relevant. I didn't even think about like that. Tana, you know. Yeah. That's hard. That's hard. So stay really. And I think that even talk, talking to the point about experimentation, like like even for like Yeet, like I feel like if an artist is in a certain sound. And then the producer's like, yo, I think that we should go in this direction and start experimenting. I, I personally feel like that can add 
to the, to the, to the legacy because you're, you're expanding on something that they're usually not doing. It might not be like that first, but I feel like, I mean, has that shown success for you like in terms of experimenting? Me? Yeah. Yeah, hell yeah. I mean, I feel like I, I said earlier, um, Sure, I don't know what else to say. Yeah. I mean, like, I mean, like, I mean in general, like when, when, with your, when you're with, a, uh, with an artist, and you're like, yo, we should go in this route. Who 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 are you? Who do you feel like you're the most experimental with, right now? Who let you really do your thing? Like, be like, go ahead, like just paint, just paint the canvas, because that's different, right? Like, like sometimes we get in the studio with people and they just be like, what you want to do? And sometimes they have a very direct idea. Who lets you just go to Wilders? I, 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 I can't, I, I, I want to say ye, but I feel like there's someone else that's not ye. I just can't think of it. Um, you know what? I'm going to say Tizo. Okay, that's yeah. a great answer. I'm, I'm well, going to say Tizo. Because yeah. like, Tizo's a producer too, as well. And um, a lot of the songs that, that we've done, um, he's, 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 he's like really hands on. He's, he's probably the hardest artist I've ever worked with because we, we just, like he always wants to, to just put it to the highest level. And like, I, I, I love that, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I love being challenged and, and being pushed to like try new things and try different sounds and like, and like merge different things t together. I don't know, I feel like, yeah, dude, I feel like it's, it's Tizo. I feel like you guys all have worked with superstars and up and coming artists. Mm -hmm. Is there, like, what are the different types of experiences there? Like, working with an up and coming artist versus a superstar, per se? I feel like it's way, I feel like it's way more easier to work with an up and coming artist. And then when it's a big artist, you're just like, I, like, I don't want to fuck this up. And you're just yeah. like, you're just super, <laughs> like, not nervous, but you're just like, yo, let me just, you know, relax. But like with the up and coming artists, you can be like, yo, like, try this, try that. But I feel like with like a bigger artist, like once you, you know, build that, like, that relationship, build that rapport, I feel like you'll be able to get to that point to be like, yo, let's do some, some, something cool or some, something different, you know? Yeah. Yeah. What's exciting you guys right now about music in general? Just um, taking risks. Like, even like with the song I just put out with Ice, Think You the Shit, Fart, like, who else got a song? Like, no, let's do like, I We in 2024. All, I like, love the comedy you know of it. Like, like, yeah, I love it. But it's hard. I love it. It's comedy, but it's facts. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, Please, yeah. Like, in my opinion, like, it's just as much art as anything else. Like, yes. everything is subjective. Like, yes. Like, you feel me? Like, I would always say simple is hard. Yeah, like, you feel me? I feel like shit like that is cool because it's like, you just gotta just do it, like you know what I'm saying. Like you just take a risk, like. Do you fuck it? Like coming coming from the producer community, do you feel like when you make bold statements like that, you really gotta wear a shield? Like do it do it hurt sometimes? Like I'm, nah, it don't like, hurt because like you feel me. Everybody got the the opinion they entitled to, but like you feel me. A lot of people appreciate things after the fact. Yeah. So it's like yeah. you know, next thing you know, you start hearing songs trying to emulate that or whatever. In general, I'm not even talking yeah. about whatever song, but I just feel like you gotta just, whatever you do, you gotta stand on it. You know what I'm saying? You know, even for songs that are bigger than the other songs or the small songs, you know, if you, I look at music as kind of like, like a moment in time, Yes. you know? Even if you don't like a song you did, you know, it brings you back to that, to that time in your life. Right, right. So I appreciate everything that I make, you know, whether I like it in the future or I don't, cause I was there at that one point that helped me get to the next point, you know what I'm saying? So. I mean, you took some risks. We we were talking downstairs, so you know this is like Grammy weekend. Like, what are what are you nominated for this weekend? Uh, best rap song with Barbie World. Okay. With Nicki Minaj. And okay. Ice Spice. Uh, I'm gonna keep it real. That was one of them joints when I heard it. I was like, God damn! I had to text Benny like, we missed the note because like, like, as producers, like, if I say you killed something, that's really how I'm showing my respect. I like, appreciate oh. that. Man. And it's like. When, when we really get to a level, like me and Ben, we'll, we'll call each other and be like, man, we missed that, or like they killed that, or like y'all really keep us on our toes like that. That was definitely one of the records that I was like, wish we could have got that. Now, I'm gonna tell you what's funny, those records are hard to clear, huh? Well, yeah, well, I mean, this one was kind of a unique situation because like, you know, 
with the Barbie soundtrack, mm -hmm. you know, they had to get the blessing from, you know, Aqua and vice versa. And yes. I think they had, you know, some kind of situation, you know, decades, Perfect timing, though. decades ago, but you know, it's been so long. So to be able to be a part of that and yeah. bring all those worlds together, you know, was a blessing. So I mean, I'm happy to be a part of that. Cool. So what what else you say you were nominated for this weekend? So Barbie World Best Rap Song. Mm -hmm. I think Barbie World is the best song written for visual media. Okay. I think it's called. Okay. And then um, I worked on Karma with Taylor and Ice um, for Best Pop Duo. Don't brush but that. I didn't produce that. I just was working, you know, some little songwriting shit. But but like let's produ now. Do you feel like production is giving your influence being in a like? There's a lot of ways of production, right? And I, yeah. I, I hear people say that sometimes, right? Mm -hmm. But like, sometimes producing ain't really doing this. It's like, do, do you feel like you can still produce in that way even without making the sound? Yeah, but I'm such a producer at heart that I gotta yeah. touch it. Like, I can't, like, you know, like, but that situation was unique. Like, when you walk in the studio with Taylor Swift, you don't really, you just kind of just. Yeah, you be easy. Kind of just Mac. Yeah. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. like, you know, you can't, like, I know you kind of was saying that, like, What's the difference between working with a huge artist versus a small one? Like, you kind of don't want to over talk. You don't want to turn nobody off. You just want to kind of just be in the present and just, you know, move accordingly. So, shit like that, you know. Is is this your this your first Grammys? Yeah, first Grammys, man. Thank you. Crazy, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Crazy. Feel good, right? Yeah, bro. I think I think it's important, like. Um, that we even want to do the Grammys again. I, I be saying this to Ben a lot, like, we got to a point where we start saying like, fuck the Grammys and we don't want to do it. And I, and I think what that led to was, that's why the music got worse. And mm -hmm. I think that like, as much as we say we don't like trophies, we do. Mm -hmm. And we and we like those accolades. And like, I love that like this generation now want to win again. Mm -hmm. Like, we can only win if we participate. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like. I complained about it a lot too because I feel like a lot of great producers don't get looks. But then, first thing I say to Ben is like, "All right, cool. How can we participate more?" So, I think that's great. I hope you win, bro. I nah, really, thanks, man. I appreciate sure, you. Sure. Hey, what, and, hey, you wanna go? You go Please go. But I was saying, like, even seeing the evolution of music, like, what have you seen that excites you personally about the newer music coming out as well? Uh, I don't know. It's like everything is more technical and now you know i come from an era where you got to learn you got to know how to play an instrument you got to know how to plug a drum machine up to the keyboard and you got to you know but it's so different now and it's and it makes the music so much bigger you know the way it's, it, it can be presented now it's like i watch guys pr produce a number one song with just you know a laptop like, you don't need nothing else. Mm -hmm. So, sure. you know. Some type of phone. Yeah, you can just. <laughs> that better? Do you think that's better? I, I'm not it's better? saying it's better, but, you know, it's just it's the evol evolution of music. Yeah. And what's, for somebody like me, what excites me is something new. It's like, okay, I, I gotta learn this. I gotta learn how to use that, you know, and add that to what I'm doing already. So, that's exciting for me. Being a musician or being a producer, we get excited by new toys, you know what I mean? So when new sounds, a new VST came out, a new drum machine, a new keyboard, that's exciting for me. And I'm just excited just to go make beats. You know what I mean? I'm, going, I'm excited to rap. I don't even care if nobody rap on them. I'm just excited to make beats, right. you know what I mean? So, you know, and that keeps me excited. Now, of course, when somebody start rapping on these beats, it makes me that much more excited, so. Are you a studio owner as well? Cause like, I. I'm like the, I'm like probably the baby of your era. And what it meant to be a producer then was like, you had to have a studio. I know a lot of producers now don't even own a studio anymore, right? Are you, are you, are you still a studio owner? But my studio has always been in my house. I don't know if you go back and okay. look on okay. YouTube or whatever. Okay. Yeah. Every artist that I ever worked with there, you know, come to my house. Right, your home, okay. And first it was at my mama's basement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's where everything got started. You know do, what I mean, Do you feel like, um, like something that happened in Philly was the big studio, the technology caused the big studio to be gone. Mm -hmm. And I noticed Atlanta is one of the last markets that still has that big studio. Do you think that's because you guys still have a thriving independent market? But like, what, what's, what's that still that draw in Atlanta to still, cause y'all got like stank on it. Like y'all, y'all still have legendary, yeah, yeah, yeah. like we don't, we, we lost that in Philly. Yeah, like yeah. we have 
one main studio left. And I think a lot of that is, you know, the growth of things. A lot of that was technology made people feel like we, we don't need the Neither studio anymore. But like, what, what do you feel like kept studios alive in Atlanta? For Atlanta, it's like we thrive off of getting out and going. So it's the experience. It's the, of the experience. Studio. It's like gotcha. it's like the club almost. Um, yeah. Studio, yes. You go to the studio and you got a hundred people with you. Like you ain't supposed to have that many people in the studio. <laughs> but that's how we want to record. Yes. You know, so and I, th I think it's just that, you know. So you guys capitalize off of the experience of the studio and that's what really because people still feel like I'm going to the studio. I'm going to the studio. I, I, I think LA, LA reminds me of that too, yeah. like, like being here, because like our studios in Philly are very homey. They're not like super technology. Like we're getting amazing records, but yeah. it's like, it's definitely like a homier feel. You, Y'all still, is it still like a big studio thing in, in New York or no? Um, nah, yeah, I mean, yeah, like you got the quads, Manhattan beaches. But know. like, but like your era, cause like you, you, you guys are on top. So are y'all doing like a lot of mobile stuff? Is it like? All mobile, bro. Okay. hotel rooms, uh, hotel rooms, indoors. Like, you know, I, I told Benny have a session today. You know, I don't even do sessions. I'm just doing it cause you know, I'm just celebrating it's the this social week. Hour. Like yeah, I just, yeah, I just yeah, feel yeah. good this week. Like, but, you know, I. Nowadays, I just cook up no headphones on a laptop. Like, I just be, I just be outside. Like, I don't even, like, not literally, I don't be outside, literally. But I be inside <laughs> just listening to the to the laptop. Like, that's what I'm on. Like, I don't even really be going out. You don't really catch me at, like, too many sessions with people. I don't really like doing sessions with, like that. Not because, you know, I'm not trying to network or nothing. It's just, like, I just be in my own bubble. Oh, you no, know bro, what I'm, I'm saying? We're, I just, we're super anti. So most, most super creatives, are not very like we got people. beats together we never linked up in the studio see that's amazing you know what i'm saying that's amazing is like, this is this your first time first time me and no your first time me yeah. we've been yeah. talking over a year you know? so but, but so this is really all of our yeah. first time yeah. yeah that's what i'm saying yeah like i know i think we should actually clap for that one. <laughs> well that's dope that's you know that's that's special i think like that is the point of conversation because we can go from like meeting to like socializing and then naturally sh shit may work together and I, th I think like that's the natural progression and like if we can do this more you know our community would be healthy bro because we still need the OGs and I think a lot of the OGs if they are I think a lot of older producers can get to the younger artists through the younger producers and I think a lot of the younger producers can learn how to I think your era showed us how to executively produce. And I think that's like, I think that that's something that you really, when, when we first got together, you expressed that to me a lot, was like, I want to executively produce. Like, as a producer, does that feel different when you have multiple opportunities to like work with the same person? Like, do you prefer that more than like just the in and out thing at this point? Um. It depends on how I'm feeling, man. Sometimes I'm made to just want to lock in, but then again, sometimes I, I do get bored very easily, you know, and I might want to just do something else the next day or not be with the same person for for a week straight, you know. I mean, it all depends. Everybody's different. Does it does it feel like um, does it mean more? Like is is it like one of those like producer nuancey things of like I executively produce this? Like does does that still hold some weight in the community? Um, t to me or to everyone else? I mean, both. Um, I to yourself? Like, I feel like it, 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 it most definitely holds weight. Um, uh, I guess both ways. Um, I, 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 I don't know how to, I, I don't know how to answer this question. <laughs> I feel like, I feel like for me, like the reason, you know, I'm only where I'm at for, you know, being an executive producer for yeah. for an artist, you know, and I feel like I got that from Zay's book, you know, him working with Future and doing the Beast Mode tapes and just every single song that like just his sound like that inspired me to want to lock in with somebody too, you know. I feel like um, I'd rather that than you know a couple like one off with, with, with no relationship, sure. you know, because I I don't really have too much say, and you know. It's not, not, I'm not saying I need to have all the authority and nothing like that, but I, it makes me feel better in my spirit when, better chemistry. when I when I could you know give you know input and 
you know, and really help craft these 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 records, you know. Um, so I think I think executive producing is actually like one of the most grail things yeah. in the producer community right now, because you know there's a lot of, you know, people doing loops, beats, you know, there's, hope, there's so many producers now, you know, um, but I feel like that's what makes you stand out as a producer, in, you know, nowadays, being executively with somebody, you know, that's how you really get your shine, you know. Mm -hmm. um, Love your tag, by the way. Like oh, a lot you. of a lot of people know us for tags. Like de definitely, are you your tag. Like y'all taught us how to monetize that. Yeah. Like like that's big. I had like, to do it back in the day. Cause... But but it, it taught me a million dollar business yeah. for real for real because I realized that people want your tag more than they even want the sound yeah. at a point. So that allows you to like build your business out. And as long as that brand and that stamp is on there, like they want it, they want it. we can we can sell it. And definitely at this table, like all three of y'all have, like the tag. As soon as you hear that, like you know, your tag, you you go crazy. So like, do you, do you like to change your tag, or or do you have like the one constant one? No, I'm, I mean, the tag that most people know now is my second tag. Yes. My first tag was myself. I, like, I was like 16. <laughs> I just said riot, and I have added some delays and like put some distortion on it. It's a trash. Well, <laughs> how did you make your tag? I, I did the same thing. I just said, they told me to put a verify on it. And yeah. Oh, wait, so that's you? Yeah. That's that was fire. Me. But the new one, the, the one that's the, the Zay told that that's my daughter now. Oh. Yeah. Okay, okay. But see, a lot of people probably won't even no, know. No, 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 that's thing. even, no, please, because yeah. we, like, me, me and Benny are fathers, and we be making jokes about, like, yeah. use our kids in the music. Yeah. So can you, can you tell us how you, how you well, did that? Well, you know, my era with the the Zaytoven tag that I did was 2004, like okay. you know, 2004 <laughs> to 2000, maybe 2010. Okay. Like when I did when I first worked with Usher, so that was my first time having a number one is in 2010. But my first big song was So Icy in 2004. Killed. So. When, you know, as I'm getting years in the game, it's like, okay, I need to, I want to rebrand, I want to do something different. So yeah. I had my daughter, you know, make fine. a tag. How, so, how, how old was she at She had to be time? about six years old. Okay, that's fine, okay, yeah. So then when you start hearing Dolph and Migos and, you know, all these other artists, like, okay, I need a new, I need something new. Yeah. So when I did Versace, it made me feel like so icy from 2004. Versace was two, 2013, it made me feel like I started all over again. Yeah. So now it's like, okay, I needed a new tag. I got to do something different. Fire. Yeah. So. Wait, I have one question. In your tag, that piano run that that's that that's coming down, like, what is that, like? Just me doing a run and just adding it on top of the, uh, you know, my tag, my okay. Zaytoven. Now. Okay, that's just fire. What's okay. your tag? Who who did your tag? Uh, so the Benny X is from an uh, old friend from high school named Patrice. Um, she recorded it on her. Or like iPhone, like allegedly, <laughs> allegedly. Booney, I don't, I don't need no emails this week about how we owe uh, Patrice some money <laughs> on some of these songs. No. So allegedly, Patrice. <laughs> no, it's crazy. Like I like haven't heard from her since high school. You about like, to. I, 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 <laughs> you about to. I have no idea where she is. I don't even know if she's even alive. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, you changed our tag. What made you change our tag yeah, to, made, to, yeah. the, to, to um, what it is now? I think I, I was listening to Rick Ross and uh, allegedly. And the, and the <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. You really gotta say that. Though. Yeah, you really <laughs> no, no. But like, no, Ross is the hit song. No, no. I was basically to just trying to just basically, you know, just have something that just basically was my own way of what you guys had, you know what I'm saying? Like something where- Like this the Benny version exactly, of it. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So I was listening to the Maybach tag and I was like, how did they do that? I, I did some, I, I was like, I think I spent three hours on like chopping it up because it, it, it's it's not as simple as 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 people think. There's there's a delay chain and I, I like bounced it out. I re-chopped it again, it was, but anyway. Um, yeah, that's how I, you know, get, that's how the tag came. Is there an evolution? Is there a new one going to come out? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I was making this jerk beat, and um, uh, this was literally, like, 
uh, the other day. And um, I don't even know this FYI. So. Yeah. I, 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 um, <laughs> so. But the, but the tag, like Drake be be like, and 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 the tag it goes like, you know what I'm saying? Like so, uh, it was hard. It was hard. It was hard. But yeah, yeah. I got I got a question for Zay real quick. Like I just want to know like what what was the energy from artists back when you first did your tag? You know, and, and you know when you was doing your thing like in the early 2000s. Like when you first did your tag, like what was the energy? Did was they like why you got this on the beat? Like did they like it? Did they oh, not like question. it? That's a great question. Because now it's normal hip hop. Well, but what, how is it like? You know then like well my 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 first major main artist I was working with was Gucci Man right right. right. So to him, Gucci man think I'm the best thing in the world. He go around bragging, Zay, man, you gotta remember yeah, Zay yeah, told him, yeah. Zay, you gotta hear Zay. So, you know, me putting a tag on a beat, he was all for that. It didn't, you know, he wanted me to put a tag on every beat. Right. I didn't have to, cause every song he's saying, Zay, Zay this, Zay, <laughs> Zay, Zay, I got Zay, it's Zay. You know, he kept doing it. He was really making the tag. That's for love, him. yeah. But uh, as he began to get popular, you start hearing people making beats that sound like mine. And I'm like, well, I, you know how you might go to the club and like, ooh, I, I don't remember doing this one. Yeah, yeah, it sounds just, uh, <laughs> sound just like me. So it's like, okay, now I gotta start tagging my beats. Cause you know, now people just taking the swag and probably trying to sell beats and make money off of it. So. Right. But they, you know, they love it. Matter of fact, they, would, they wouldn't even want the song no more unless I put my tag on it. Right, you know, so. that's dope. Yeah, it sounds and, good. And we're, we're about to be on time, but um, before we go to Q and A, just I want to just get a couple questions from the audience. Um, is there anything? I mean, everybody here I feel like is some sort of aspiring something, and I know that you guys all have a very different journey that has led you to success. Is there anything in particular that particular that you would tell somebody that to do this, that, or not to tell them, but like anything in particular in your favor that has helped you along the way? Um, it's a song called Optimistic by the Sounds of Blackness um, <laughs> that, that got me through a lot. I would just play that. I could be in the worst whatever. I would play that song and I would just, you know what, I'm going to keep going. I love that so, song. I don't know, that song. Wait, what was the question again? Is there anything in particular on the way to, your, on, on the way to success that has helped you? That oh. I just I just say uh, uh shit uh, just follow follow who 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 fuck with you like don't don't try to force relationships with people even if even if uh, you really you know like that person you know it it might happen in the future like but don't don't um, don't don't try to force nothing like you know follow follow your heart and follow what you like to do what you the music you like to make and it'll all fall fall uh, in place and um and, and take that risk man like. I swear to God, nothing like everything changed when I took that risk when I when I quit my job, and like a couple months later, like shit started working, like you know, like little shit like that, like like you gonna you gonna feel it, like I you know I'm I'm spiritual, I believe in you know, in in a higher spirit and shit, so like you kind of get these 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 hints sometimes when you're in the right direction, just trust that, even if it's scary, like just trust it, follow it, and let the music guide you to where you where you want to go, and and it'll work out, you know. You don't gotta know how. That's for God to know how. But you gotta just believe in yourself. Indeed. Is there anything, uh, brother? I think the biggest thing for me is being consistent. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of people, you know, especially when it comes to music, you might do it for so long, and if it ain't going nowhere, then you want to do something else, you try something else, or whatever. But I know, even like I, I told you, I'm a church musician. I'm consistently a church musician to this day, even though I started back when I was yeah. six years old. I never stopped doing what I've been doing, yep. and I feel like that's the reason I've, you know, been successful. So, that's legendary. I have one. Yeah, go. Question: Have you ever guys been in a point where you don't feel creative? Yeah. All the time. Yeah, all the time. Okay. But this seems like that's when my best beats come out, though. Mm -hmm. When I don't feel like being creative, or I don't really know what I want to make, I just start making some music, and you'd be surprised, like, oh, I need that beat right there. That's the one I need. Okay. Like, bro, I, ain't, I didn't want to make that. I was going to throw that in the trash. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, that's what, I think that's what that consistency means. Mm -hmm. Like, I get up every morning at 6.30 in the morning, and I'm, you know, I'm making beats. Mm -hmm. 
So whether I like, whether, whether I feel like it, whether I, you know, don't feel like it, so. Hmm. All right. Cool. Yeah, that's great. I'm, I'm, yeah, I mean, we could just open it up to a question from the audience. I'd just love to hear if anybody had any questions or if just me, one person. You want to yeah, yeah. ask a question? Uh, what's up, everybody? You want me to stand up or? I mean, no, you're no, you good, you know. What's up, everybody? My name is Lights. I'm an arch from Philadelphia. Um, I, we talked about a lot of things, but one of the things that I wanted to talk more or less about is the business aspect of it. Um, I think at one point in time, all of you guys may not have been as successful as we were. And what was that about, like, what was that transition to having gave them the first real check and going for nothing? Obviously, you got family, everybody think you're rich. How did y'all go through that process? Um, now, are you talking about at the point where you just made it or before that? Um, I guess just whatever state, whatever space that you were in where you weren't as bad as you were. And things were getting good, but now I just gotta make the right decisions because I'm not there yet. You know what I'm saying? I would say management. You need great management, like, like James. Is where James at? He's somewhere in this. James room. is a legendary guy. Yeah, it is. Good it is. For Shout out, like James. Yeah, like, yeah, like, James. He, he he changed my life, like for real. Like when I met him, I had like probably a hundred dollars to my name. I quit my job. I was just. I wasn't panicking because I knew this is what I wanted to do, but you know, I had just uh, graduated or about to graduate, and I was just like, fuck, like, what's going on? I met him in 2022, early 2022. Long story short, you know, when shit started picking up and all these, you know, people calling for pub and people want to sign you and I got this, you know, I would say just have a good manager because they'll help you weed out some of these bad deals. Cause you know, a lot of the first deals, believe it or not, like they might be good, but they might not be that good in, in, in the technical terms. You know what I'm saying? For your best interest in the long in the long term. But having a good manager is gonna help you, you feel me? Especially when I got, you know, good relationships, when I know how to, you know, represent you, you know, cause a lot of people try to manage, but they might not have, you know, the relationships or, you know, the type of uh, expertise they need to help you. So I would say have a great management team because they're going to really help, you know, navigate how to get the best situation for you. You know what I'm saying? So great management is what I would say. Well, I know when I got my first check, why well, I went and bought a necklace or a fur coat. Talk to <laughs> me. Talk to <laughs> me. I, up, I like blew my first little, you know. Wait, in, you bought the fur coat in man, Georgia? In Georgia. You was like, acting crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up, bro. Because I'm with, you got to think, I'm, I'm, at a, I'm in a, at a time where, Bro, if you don't look like no money, don't nobody yeah, want to give you no money. Okay, right, I understand. Right, right, yeah, right, yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. I got you. And, I, and it worked because I used to walk in a room and I know my beats don't sound as good as his over there. But what I look like, hey, look man, like I need to shout with him. I need to get some, I want some of his beats. Right. You know what I mean? And, right. and as a producer, a lot of times I always looked at myself as I want. I need to be like the artist because people show them respect mm -hmm. and they want to get him some money. Yeah. So I need to look like an artist. So that was part of my gig. It's like, man, I got to come in here looking like something. And that brought me more money. You know what I mean? So a lot of times, you know, you can play it safe and, you know, take your money and say, hold on, I got to do this. I got to do it the right way. And other times you got to live that life because mm -hmm. I was watching guys like Gucci. And he'll spend his last dollar, but he finna had a, the, you know, the biggest chain out there. <laughs> but it made people be like, bro, Gucci man is the man. Yeah. And you know, and if I'm hanging with him, I got to spend my last dollar too. Oh my. Nah, that's a fact. <laughs> Not saying that's a smart decision, but at the same time, Go. it what works. We want the honest answer. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think that there, I think what you're saying is truth. Like, we all take risks. We all gotta have. Take those risks. We all have. Like, I think most of us have probably had other paths that we could have taken that was probably more stable. We didn't have kids early. We didn't have a lot of things that probably would have made you want to take the stable thing. Yeah. I think we are here from a certain amount of risk. So oh yeah, for sure. I feel you. No, I've, no. I've been broke four times. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like if you you know you got a life. No, I felt good now. No, the journey, the journey, the journey has good. been great. Uh, I've yeah. learned I've learned about spending. You got to just get it out your system. You gotta, you gotta so it's like it. your first money, yeah. Then you get money again. You be like less stuff. And then by like the third time, you be like. All right, I have everything this time. Let me, let me say this. As long as I've been in the game, yeah. I still have to use that method. 
Yeah. Believe it or not, because I'm around big dog. I'm around people that yeah. really, you know. Yes. And you might not see my name on for, for a Grammy or on the top Billboard list, but when you see me, you're gonna be like, he the guy. Mm -hmm. For sure. Every like, time. He's successful. Yes, sir. You know, because I'm gonna pull up in whatever car that whoever rapper guy, I'm gonna do all that. I'm gonna have whatever jury. So it's it's a it's a respect thing. Yes, sir. And a lot of times producers, we don't get the respect that we're looking for. Yeah. So sometimes you gotta, you know, you gotta make them respect you. So to, for me to do an album with uh, Usher or Future, you know, it's because they look at me and they see the respect. Well, yeah. no, I, I need to do, I, I gotta rock with him. Yes, sir. And it's not, I don't feel like it's just cause, just cause my music is better than somebody else's or something like that. It's just a- The brand a, is it's better. It's a brand. It's the brand a, it's is it's better. It's like a brand, so yeah. I hope management has changed your life, Vinny. Oh yeah, hell yeah. What? <laughs> um, nah, I feel like, um, but like, like having the family definitely pushed me to basically figure it the fuck out. I met Ness in that process. He he helped me basically just get all of my like the business right. As as far as buying a house, as far as you know, building a studio, just just getting all my like contracts right. I mean, it's like what what, what like Brad said earlier, just just having good a good management team and you know. Yeah, I'm tough. We 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 talk. Every day we oh, argue. Oh, we like argue. We, we argue, but like you know what I'm saying. Like, but you know, I think that's what you're saying. Is like I'm I'm here for you, like right or wrong. Right. Like as a manager, I can't choose when to ride. I got to ride all the time. Cause you believe. Yeah, I, 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 let's let's really be honest. I I started working on dying before Benny. I, I had success before Benny. Benny, I say it to Benny all the time. When I first met, I knew from day one, bro. I, I, it's the same thing. It, like, I don't know. It wasn't. It wasn't because he had a song, or he did something. Mm -hmm. I just was like, yo, like, it's just something about this this dude. I was just like, I, I, I don't know. And then we just kept like interacting, and he already liked the people in my crew. And then when the timing was right, I just was like, all right. And, and I'll be walking by faith too, bro. Like, we just moved out here. Yeah. We there isn't no blueprint. The blueprint is just to walk. Yeah. And, and no 401k, no none of that. Yeah. No 401k, no, it's just hustle. Yeah. Just uh -huh. music. Like, yeah. and I feel like what Zay was saying, you know, you got to invest in yourself. Got to. I feel like when you invest in yourself, the world will just. They're, they got to equally, they're going to equally do it, yeah. It's money come and go, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, just yeah. stay healthy, yeah. love, love music, you know what I'm saying? Family. Yeah. 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 Definitely. No, I appreciate you guys for being here. Seriously. No, thank you a lot. Like seriously, uh, can we can we get a round of applause for the guys? Bro? Yeah, that was that was interesting. We could turn up the music. Everybody get a drink. Have a great time. This was the first conversations, by the way. So yes. I, honestly, like I appreciate you guys for doing this for the first ever one. Like yeah, yeah. I've been thinking about this idea for so long, and just to like be here, I honestly just been like just like you know, like starstruck more than anything. So <laughs> I don't know if I even said that much, but um, <laughs> I, I, no, I appreciate it. Cause I think that like, this is, this is what we want to create. We want to create more conversation around in, in merging worlds, you know? And um, yeah, this is a dream come true. So thank you guys so much. And Thanks for having us, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amazing, thank you. Thank you. No, no. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> 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 the vibes, man. Music. Good stuff, bro. Right. <laughs>